Working on the OG Cricut here. Oasis Green, hey, OG. This is the original, the one that started it all. 500,000 miles. At some point in this car's life, it was rear ended. And this is all filler, as you can see. Well, anyway, there we are. I don't see any reason why I couldn't fix this. along this bottom line just get some studs and again i'm not a body man so i'm probably not going to be doing this right get a stud right there get a stud right there stud right there get a couple studs here get a stud here and here and maybe one there get a stud here in the middle set all along this bottom ridge here there maybe even down below that and pull this way I have to pull the bumper off finish getting all this off huh maybe even ding 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 I'm gonna have to be careful with the fumes but I really don't see why it couldn't have been fixed right they didn't do a good job on this at all hell I could actually run a piece of wire in there and out there pull on it would probably pull that right out piece of wire here and come out here pull that out piece of wire there pull that out piece of wire here oh, that's already sticking up i get my straight edge and see that's so disappointing but you know that wasn't all me you can see the pink bondo was there years ago and the gray bondo was the crap i put on it This, this is one thing I'm worried about. Look at all that. That's all Washington. I <sighs> just chipped it off, but it's pretty thin. It's on both sides. Well, it's time to go get lunch. I'll be back later. Okay, so yesterday when I was working on the back of the OG Cricket, I did all the body work and such and for whatever reason the phone recording had shut off i think i touched the screen and it was enough to make it quit recording and <clears throat> so all that is lost basically all i have is the video before where it's like the aftermath so let me at least touch base with you guys to see what's going on all righty well that's about as good as I got it. Not perfect. I gotta do a little more pulling over here. When I welded up those holes, it warped it a little bit and so it pulled back to where it was. I need to pull it just a little bit more. And then this bottom edge here, I gotta pull down here. I gotta pull the bumper off. This is pretty well done. I just need to a little skim of filler on it. This little spot right up in here. I don't like having filler up here, but really isn't any way to avoid it. All right. So today is a kind of cold, windy. It's a drizzly day. May as well be back in Washington. Um. So. I showed you guys this last night, but I just want you to see what we're dealing with here. So as you remember before, this was kind of a deep um, crease. I'm guessing at one point this was pushed in like all the way and they hooked it with whatever that three eighths holes were and pulled it back out somewhat and slapped it with filler. Now I've got in the trunk a piece of steel that's got a factory edge on it that I'm using for my straight edge. But now before I'd only ground this little bit um, so the straight edge wouldn't sit flat because it was longer than that. So I started grinding back all this filler over here and I discovered this dent. Now this, you can kind of see this over oval outline 
So this peak here was pushed in flat, like this was flat. And they took like a pick hammer or you know, a sharp edge body hammer and they just knocked down the high spots and <clears throat> covered it with filler. So it was real thick here in that area. And so I got on it with the stud gun and I pulled that peak back out and I knocked this down as I was pulling it and uh, got it close. There's still gonna be a little filler there in the middle, but I don't think I could pull that metal out anymore. It's It's been stretched pretty good. You got like that high spot there. We'll be just under the filler when we're all said and done and then there'll be a little bit more underneath it. Uh, I'm afraid of working it too much too. You know? another problem and so even with all this work I still need to come over here and I need to pull a little bit over here I think and then underneath it needs some pulling I need to get the rest of the filler out from down here and pull this out I gotta pull the bumper off with well, the other problem that we're gonna have is we've got you can see the body here see the body and then it starts to disappear and it actually goes under the edge of the trunk lid and then it comes back out so it's got a bow to it and it's going to continue having a bow to it I'm not going to be able to pull this edge without just tearing everything up and I don't really have the equipment to push it back out more um, and I'm not going to cut this off, fix it, and weld it back on like I did the thing because, you know, this is much thinner than the record body. So it'll end up having the same bow. And I'm not going to pack this full of filler out to here either. I'm just going to make sure that this edge is smooth so it needs a little filler right here. And that's it. So it's going to have the bow. We're just going to have to live with it. Uh, so I'll get on there, pull the bumper, and I'll pull this you know, grind this out, pull this out, um, and I'll double check everything because when I ground, I welded up those three eighths holes with my flux cores. I put a lot of heat back into it and it did push the metal back in. Plus my, um, oh yeah, I did that yesterday. Any of you guys ever used a slide hammer? Unfortunately, I had my finger over the handle and I made a really hard pull and it just slammed into that. It's pretty ugly. Anyway, um, I'll check everything and see just how bad it pulled back in. I might have to pull some more here and there. And once that's done, I'll have to pull the filler neck out and plug the gas tank somehow so we don't end up you know, grinding, getting a spark, and then blowing all this up. I don't want to pull the gas tank. It's got a full tank, so we'll stand it all down with the DA. Hopefully, I don't have to pull the taillights, but I think I can just sand it to there and feather it the rest of the way and then we'll hit it with filler primer cut it back or you know bondo obviously we'll fill it and then sand it all get it all good and then filler primer cut it back and then regular primer and i'm gonna just spray it with flat black because this is this used to be semi-gloss but it's faded enough i want to keep the faded look so having a really nice fresh paint you know so that's it. I'm not going to work on it today with the weather doing what it's doing. Uh, we'll just call it a slow day. Plus, I'm kind of sore from yesterday. But we'll get back on it tomorrow. Well, sorry, I forgot to film before I laid the filler down. It's the same fiberglass filler I used on the front of the wagon. Now the bodywork that's under there, no self-respecting body man would call that good. But the good news is I'm not a body man. I don't have any self-respect, so hey, we're good. Um, I'll, I'll need another coat. You can see the little spots there. That's the worst of it. This side should be okay, I think. Probably hit it with uh, DA just really quick, 
knock down all that high stuff, figure out how much more we're gonna need, and then come back and put another layer on it. Hit it with the DA again. And if it's not too horrible bad, then we go over it with the regular filler. I got a little carried away. My original plan was just to take care of the middle part, and I had to take care of just a little bit down here. And then this morning, as I'm working, 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 you know, there's some... Around both of these bumper bracket holes, there's filler. And around the muffler thing, because back, you know, in the 90s, I cut that out and had a big, huge exhaust tip like, you know, all the ricers had. So that's been welded back in with a stick welder. So I need to take all the filler out, straighten it out, get it back to good. And yeah, so we're going to let this set up and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so you can see. The low spots here, there. You see, this is where the original crease was. The low spots down there, a low spot here, a little bit there. I didn't sand this too much because it's just real thin. Um, so I'm gonna blow this off, wipe it down with lacquer thinner, and then put another coat over the top of it. And we will see, we'll see what it looks like. Threw a little primer on it just to keep it from rusting. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. And the problem is I go back to work Saturday. This is Thursday, so tomorrow's Friday, and then go back to work Saturday, Sunday. So it'll be Monday before I can get back on it. But that's just the quick sanding. Next is the actual Bondo, you know, filler. You can see that edge there. Disappears just like before. But it looks like it's almost flush. So I might have actually gotten it to stick out some. <sighs> Boy, I'm tired. Okay. Yeah, this is Snowball. I just wanted to fix that. And now I'm going to have to deal with that, fix the dent behind it. And if I'm doing that, then I may as well. I mean, there's a spot over here. i got to figure out why there's filler. So I may as well fix those two spots, pull those bumper brackets. You know, one thing, before I took this car to the body shop to have it painted, <clears throat> I took those bumper brackets off and I sandblasted them. I etch primed them and I painted them semi-gloss black and they looked perfect. And then the body shop painted, painted over them. So back in September of 2000, I took this thing, popped the windows out of it and all the trim and the lights, you know, the tail lights, I took off in the parking lot and I drove it to the body shop. $400 got me the body work, you know, fixing the little dings and stuff and got me the paint. I bought the paint. They sprayed it. And when I got it back, you know, I told them I didn't want lacquer primer. I didn't want, you know, the lacquer spot putty. I wanted them to use the good stuff. I wanted them to sand all the spray paint off. I wanted to do all this stuff. When I got it back, I was pissed because they didn't do any of that. And then, you know, I was going to go and complain. I was going to sue them. I was going to do all this stuff. And I got to thinking about it. It's like, you know what? I just got a paint job for 400 bucks plus 120, I think, for the paint. Um, this is, it's uh, PPG. So it's Delstar, I think. Um, yeah, something. I think they over-reduced the paint though because it really didn't hold up well. But you know, the paint job's 23 years old, 22 and a half years old. So I can't really complain too much. But yeah, bad body work, bad body panel, lots of filler. For the most part, it's it's there. I just gotta, you know, the spot in the bottom down there where the panel 
goes under and then comes down, I need to fill that because those two little spots are still there. But anyway, I'm going in. I'm exhausted. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe it won't rain. So here's a little detail for you guys. You can see the cracking. All the blue paint. You can see all the fillers cracking out. Got all this filler here. And along the lip, it's rusty. It's flaky. I think that's from being in Washington and the paint being really thin. Got some rust here around this brazing, which is factory, by the way. Um, I started stripping this. You got, this is where I cut it. And if you look, you see that line right there. Apparently I cut it with a pair of tin snips. See all the rust that was forming underneath it. And this panel is all dented up. So this panel is just beat. Dent there, dent there, dent there. This is all wavy down here. Gonna have to straighten this out. We still need to grind Bondo and find out what's underneath there. What's underneath here? Get all on this, you see the cracking. Gotta fix that corner right there. You can see the grinding marks and they didn't even sand here. You can see, this must have been old filler because that yellow is my racing stripe I used to have going up over the top of the car. I even sprayed it on the grill on the uh, sunroof. See that green it was my paint, so this was all underneath my green. This was on top of it. So this is why I wanted them to sand off all that old spray paint. There's so many layers of paint jobs that I gave this car over the years. There's the last green I had it before I painted it this color. Grind all this out. Make sure it doesn't rust. Alrighty, back to work. Well, as you can see, they just filled right over the top of the paint. Now it's actually doing a good job of sticking to it, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to do it. But again, I'm not a body man. You've got these, they're all spot welds, holding this panel to the trunk floor, basically. And they've been pushed in and then pulled back out, and so they're deeper than they're supposed to be. And of course the panel is kind of dented around it, and it really isn't a good way to fix it. <clears throat> Maybe knock this little ridge down here, but I can't pull on these because yeah, it's a weld. Maybe I can pull on it. I don't know. The lip on the inside, I can feel it with my finger, has been pushed over. It's in pretty, pretty bad shape. It's been rolled over like that. But I can't get to it without pulling this panel off, and I'm not doing that. If I were doing that, then I would replace it. <laughs> that dust all over my phone. Uh, one thing... At least I'm learning here. I didn't even know these spot welds were there. Although you can see them here pretty easily. But So now I know when I go to take that panel off that half car, the number two cricket, I'm going to need to drill these spot welds out. I need to come drill these spot welds out. And I'm not sure what they did here. Then of course there's the, the braze. Unfortunately, all my stripping wheels are in the wagon. So hopefully that one lasts long enough to get this done. Get that done and get this all ground down. And then over there. Back to work. Okay. So like I said before, these are spot welds. 
and the metal's damaged around them, but there really isn't much I can do. This is a dent. You have to pull that. Stud, stud, stud. This down here, I need to cut the weld that I did and fix it. Because what I did is I took 10 snips, apparently, cut, cut, and then I just folded the metal up to fit the, I had the paste setter double exhaust tip in here. So I need to cut that weld. I need to knock this flat, get this flange on either end of the cut to match up so I can actually weld it back shut. So then I'll have to fix this. That's a dent. I gotta fix this corner. That's a dent. That's a dent. That's a pretty good sized dent, actually. That's a dent there. There's damage here. I mean, this is terrible. That needs to be fixed. I'll probably go ahead and just weld those two holes up. This is a dent right here. I'll probably just put a stud there. Stud here. Then you got this damage. There was a little bracket that was riveted and came out to hold the license plate. Now, I'm not sure why they did that because these holes are just fine. I'm guessing they assumed that you needed four bolts to hold a license plate on in America. I don't know. Put a stud here, stud here. I might have to do a little more, on, especially on that one, because those are decent sized dents. Dent there. Oh, yeah. I forgot these. Got a bunch of damage here, here. That little spot right there, I might not do anything with. I might just fill it. Same with this one here. I'll probably leave it alone. Because I think I'll do more damage trying to fix it than just leaving it. <coughs> maybe. Maybe. That, I'll have to put a couple studs in. I'm going to have to be really careful not to pull this out too far. Same thing here. Stud, stud. Stud. And then down here. I don't even know what caused that. But it's going to have to be fixed. And it probably won't get fixed well. Yep, I got my work cut out for me. <clears throat> Time to get started. Looks like we're growing a beard. Got all these nails. And some of them represent... One dent, 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 one dent. But others represent kind of a bigger dent. So you got these three here, four. I noticed if you if you look at it really close, it's been hit with a hammer. So you know these two here. Frankly, these and this one are just to hold it so that this doesn't get pushed in. But like this, these two here, I think are going to be hard. Those are the first ones I'm going to work on. So here we go. Okay. So I got this pulled about as well as you can. These two spots here are way too sharp to get. And I went ahead and I put a bunch of nails along this outer edge to get it pulled. And I can knock down some of the high spots. But this is a hell of a lot better than it was. This too, there's quite a bit of filler in there. That's all been pulled. We're gonna leave that one alone. This little guy down here, I need to knock that high spot down. Got these holes taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and weld up the holes. We got the damage taken care of. That one, that one, weld up those two holes. Got these little guys down here taken care of. Got this up here taken care of. This is flat, really flat. Up here, this hole is actually lower than the rest of it, but it's even and consistent. So who knows, it may even be factory. I'm not gonna do anything more here until I get this back into position, hammered back out and welded back up and then I'll work around it and then we'll be able to put some mud on it. I think we'll be able to do that today. I did pull this spot weld here. 
yeah, we're looking good. But it's time to take a break, time to go get something to eat, and uh, I'll get back on it. Okay, spent some time working this. I got this little flange here back to being flat. I got this kind of straight. So what I'll do is I will start to weld and like get a bead there and then push it down, get a bead there and then push it down and get a bead and it should make the arc without having to pound on it or bend it or do anything crazy. So right now I'm gonna grab the welder and get busy. And there we are. So there's still a couple little spots that I wanna maybe pull. A little bit of grinding I need to do. You know, where I welded up these holes, I used the flux core. Now I'm gonna hit the whole thing with the flapper disc and then filler. worked out pretty well. I just gotta do the very bottom of the lip. Yep. So that's it for tonight. We'll get back on it tomorrow morning. Okay, here's where we got today. And I think it came out pretty good. I know the filler's not too thick. Got, you know, quite a few high spots, which some of them, most of them, are going to stay. Because like this here and then around this, that's all welded to the floor, so it can't go anywhere. You know, everything along this line here. This... There really isn't much we can do with it, but you can see the low spots. I'm just about out of that fiberglass filler. I need to coat this entire area here and then this here. I need to get up inside there. I need to get like a finger full in there just around the insides of there and I think the rest of it can be done with regular filler I'm pretty happy about how it's coming out it's looking pretty good once I go to the regular filler then I'll just I'll block it rather than use the DA yeah there's a lot more damage in that panel than I thought oh well it's looking pretty good. All right, it's time to go in. Too late to be making a bunch of noise out here. So tomorrow I need to get the driveway cleaned out. Need to get the garage cleaned out enough for the wagon to come into it. I'll be dragging it home tomorrow or next week. I'm not sure yet. Whichever day isn't raining. And, uh, be working on it in there but i will see you guys tomorrow okay back on the old l insecto so we're about ready i gotta blow it off and wipe it off but we're about ready to get these corners mostly and then the underside here uh, another layer of filler and just a little bit around the edge of the fuel filler normally i don't like doing that but i kind of have to on this and then sand it down and primer it. It should be pretty much done after that. Hopefully. I'd like to get back to driving this thing. All right. All righty. Well, haven't been getting much done here in the last few days, but here's where I'm at today. I still need to come in here and add a little bit more here. Take care of all that. Take care of all these little pits here. Um, a little spot here that I need to fill. Otherwise, pretty much everything is ready to go. Like, most everything down here is ready. Somehow I could not find that hole. I'll have to figure that out. So for right now, because 
it likes to rust overnight. I am just going to edge prime the bare metal spots and I'll go ahead along the bottom and put a pretty decent coat of filler primer on it. And then I'll just leave the edge primer on top because it's supposed to rain this weekend. I got to work anyway. This is Friday night. I got to work Saturday, Sunday. So yeah, that's about as far as I got tonight. It's eight o'clock now. I really shouldn't be making all this noise. So we're going to call it good. Alrighty. I wish I was better at this. You got a high spot right there. That's going to be visible. And for some odd reason, I even used a straight edge. So I don't know why. I don't know if it show up on camera. Yeah, kind of. Okay. If you look, it bows up right there. And like I said, I use a straight edge, so I don't know why. I think I'm just going to have to live with it. I can't spend another two weeks out here trying to fix that. Bottom half, though, looks like it came out pretty good. You know, you can see the styration of the different layers of filler. You get a couple little high spots here and here, you know. Those should be pretty well hidden by the license plate, I think. Um... But yeah, that came up pretty good. You got that spot right there. That needs to be, that's a big chunk of filler. It needs to be ground out. That's fine. A little bit over here too. That's fine. Got to figure out where that hole is. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going in. That is a primer, a filler primer sealer. So we will guide coat it. Sand it, <sighs> block it, do it again, and then eventually we'll throw the green base coat on it, and then that'll just get done flat black again. And it should hopefully look like old faded paint. Okay, I didn't shoot any video yesterday because frankly it was just sanding touching up a couple low spots sanding priming and i worked on it gung-ho from like 11 o'clock yesterday to about nine o'clock last night so here we are and today it's about noon and i came out here i don't like using the spot putty but pretty much all i'm using it for is little tiny I mean I can't even show you one because I got them all but little tiny pinholes you know little, little air pinholes spread it on and sand it off it sands off real quick and easy without digging out any of the filler underneath it um, there are a couple little spots in the back there where I guess the filler just kind of butted up against it but didn't you know left some voids so I just took a finger and kind of same thing here. Uh, other than that, it's all just pinholes. You know, I ran it around that to catch any pinholes or any voids or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I don't like using it. A lot of people I've seen uh, will take a panel once it's been fixed and they will actually smear the entire panel with this stuff. And then they'll sand it and paint it and you'll see Within a couple of years, the paint starts coming off and, you know, because it fractures, the stuff fractures. So it'll take off this stuff, either take it off the filler or take it off the primer and it'll stay stuck to the paint or vice versa. But it just, yeah, you don't want to use it where it's got any kind of, any kind of um, thickness to it. Like here's some 220. I'll show you. This stuff here, I think, is just about dry. This one spot. And yeah, I'm gonna block all of this out. I need to guide, guide coat it though.
see the little tiny pinholes that were there. That's all I'm using it for. So we're gonna give this stuff about a half hour to dry. I'm gonna go ahead really quick and grab the flat black and just kind of give it a fog for a guide coat. And then about a half hour or so, we'll come back out here and start sanding all these spots. And uh, hopefully we'll be ready to put some base on it. I need to find my metal fill so I can take care of that up there, but I don't think I've got hardener for it. It uses MEKP, which is some really nasty stuff. I mean, it's so nasty, it likes to eat through the little plastic, you know, uh, tube that it's in. But I'll go try to find it. Uh, oh, there's another little development I want to show you guys. So earlier, as I'm gathering supplies to do the work, I happened to notice that. Spray paint all over my interceptor wheel. Looks like there's also black spray paint. And then I noticed all the blue splatters all over my patina. All over. All over my glass. Even over the room. What had happened? One of Luke's friends, or it could have even been Luke himself, decided to stab the cans with a knife. And of course, you know, it was supposed to be empty, like it was the can's fault not being empty. Look at this, it's all over the bumper even. This is that boiled linseed oil that leaked out of the can. It'll just peel off. I'm not too worried about it, but I told him before he gets to buy anything else, he's going to go buy a gallon of lacquer thinner and a roll of paper towels. I mean, look at this. It's all the way over here on this side of the car. Kind of seeing the reflection there, all the little splatters of paint. But no, he's gonna come over here with that lacquer thinner and a roll of rags, and he's gonna get all this off. This is bullshit. It was the whole reason to build this car like this is because of the patina, and now he's gonna ruin it. I mean, I don't know. It was either him or one of his buddies. I can't tell. This is why we can't have nice things. Offspring. Okay. All right. So I got the all metal spread on there. Fortunately, I got my fingers in it there, but um, big difference with this stuff compared to regular Bondo is regular Bondo uses a polyester epoxy Ugh, resin and talcum powder is basically what it's made out of. This stuff uses a powdered zinc and I think aluminum. And it uses a different kind of binder because it actually uses MEKP as a hardener instead of this benzoyl peroxide stuff that Bondo uses. Yeah, you don't want to put it on your face. So I put it up and I mixed it, you know, a little. I mixed it a little light because I didn't want it to set off too quick like it was last week, like the Bondo was. But you know, here it is. This is a good 45 minutes later and it's it's still very rubbery. It's depositing still. So I don't know if it just was not enough or it could be that the hardener itself is bad. 
Uh, I think the peroxide might have evaporated because it's supposed to be clear and as you can see it's orange. So I don't know. Now I went ahead and hit the spot putty with the 120. And you can see, if you look carefully, the little bubbles there that are filled in. There were some scratches. It looks like the cat might have jumped up on it when the primer was soft. See all those little bubbles? So all that's done. I still need to hit that, and I need to hit that. I gotta wait for that all metal to cure before I can hit that. This I'll go ahead and hit right now, and then I'm gonna spray the guide coat, and I'll sand the whole thing with uh, 220, and it'll be ready for final primer and top coat. All right, there's the guide coat. So we're gonna let this cure up, give it about a half an hour, 45 minutes, hour, and then see if uh, it'll be ready. We'll just, we'll block it all out and make sure everything's good. And then at the very least, we can get that sanded and get this all in primer again. That may have to wait a long time, I don't know. We'll see. I may have to scrape it all off and start all over again. I don't want to do that. There we go. I'm getting ready to put down a coat. Flat black. I don't think the lacquer will have any issue with enamel, but I'm going to put it down real light anyway. And I might even put a fog coat of that hot rod gray over the top of it to make it look weathered. But let's find out here pretty soon. So it turns out the paint I have is actually semi-gloss black. I've got a tiny little bit of flat black there. Hopefully I can go over the top of it and it'll be okay. Uh, otherwise I can live with it, it's not that big a deal, but I wanted it to look old like the rest of the paint. I just bought this thing for like the last hour. Screwed up my paint job. But I can fix that. I finally got it in there and this for the first time in the entire life of us having ownership of this car this gasket more or less fits it still sticks out on the bottom but here it fits here it fits before this this gasket would stick way out especially down around here but nope it's good now gas cap looks good I need to paint it I think when I paint it, I'll fix that. Okay, it's time for me to pick up my mess and go get ready for work. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, this job is done. Uh, I still need to blast the bumper brackets and put the bumper back on, license plate and that kind of stuff, but that doesn't matter. I can do that some other time. What I need to do first, this is the bumper that I have been using, but it is the original bumper off of Cricut number two. This is the original bumper off of this car. And you will notice this one's got a little bit of damage there and the chrome is not in good shape. But overall the bumper really isn't too bad. There's a little ding here. <clears throat> a little bit there. Nothing, nothing big, no big deal. This one on the other hand, Put them right up next to each other. And you can see that bow. And I held it up there and the bow is very prominent. And of course it's been spray painted because the chrome was in horrible shape on it. Peeling off. So what I need to do is get in here and straighten this thing out. Map. Map. I didn't want to wait to put it on this video. I wanted to get this one out so you guys can see it, but I need to get this thing figured out. I think if I go through and knock this bottom edge out, knock this top edge out, and then get down the middle of it, it might straighten out. I might have to cut, put relief cuts in it like I did with the wagon bumper. I don't know, but that's for another time. Right now I just need to get this mess cleaned up and then I need to go get ready. I got about an hour, so 
that's it for now.